devotionals never take the place of Bible study. I mean, I have a pretty simple philosophy, I guess you could call it, or I would rather say a pretty simple theology or ideology or whatever ology you want to call it. I think words mean what the word means. <laughs> Sound simple? No. <laughs> Not when you talk to anyone, because everyone seems to have a different meaning for a simple word, no matter how hard you try to come to a conclusion of agreeing on still there's always seems to be some kind of attached meaning depending upon your background your way of communicating your mindset your feelings your emotions and what i mean by that is that jesus came out and said in the sermon on the mount but in basically in his teachings and his sayings that he said we should do he said let your yes be yes and your no be no and I took that to create a new way of looking at the Bible I call it item specific specifically what is is and I just use the acronym IS for it is that it's specific to what it is item specific it's if I say no I mean no I don't mean no possibly or no maybe or no with circumstances I just mean no no means no yes means yes the same thing is true in scriptures but a lot of times people will add to or change or rearrange something that makes them fit or makes it fit for their personal circumstances. And when they do, that's when you get into trouble. Because devotion, for me, means devotion is that I'm sharing my heart with God and God is sharing his heart with me in a devotion of relationship that we care for each other because we're devoted to each other. So when I say devotion, I don't mean Bible study. So I don't compare a Bible study, which is good for the soul and the mind and transforming yourself and everything else, to a devotion nor do I take a Bible reading to mean a devotion. A devotion is a devotion. It can be with, with a Bible reading in it. It could be with a scripture in it. It could be with a thought in it, a poem, a song, a prayer, whatever. But the point is, devotion is devotion. Now, evotion, as I say, is emotional devotion, is that it allows the feelings negative and positive sideways and upwards and downwards and wherever <laughs> sugar rush or coffee excitable um, humanity relatable to be expressed to our God together in our examination of what a devotional says so that we could hear God speak to us not because he can't speak in the word or does it he does of course he does but that not because he can't speak in a devotion, because I believe he does. But rather because God has given us lots of tools and opportunities that we can use to improve the way and the attitude we have in looking at and understanding the scriptures and the word of God, and then better allowing God to speak directly to us so that we don't make any mistakes. <laughs> pretty simple to me, but I know that sounds pretty religious and contrary to many, many doctrinal situations and circumstances whereby we might fear for, after all, they're just sheep and they aren't smart enough to figure out for themselves to keep their face out of the water unless they get swept away by a river. Oh, come on, give me a break. I believe we deceive ourselves often and we allow others to deceive ourselves if we choose to. I do not believe that sheep are sheep or people are stupid or that there are thousands of people sitting in a wrong church being misled. They're there because they want to be. That's it. They have seen, they have heard, and they do know. And they can walk with God to find out the facts and the truth and to make choices accordingly. But as they are, so they are. And God works with them as they are, where they are. What that means to you might be a little contrary to what, you know, you're comfortable with. What it means to me is simply that 
God can bring them across my path anytime he wants to, and I'll share with them and care with them and love them, and we'll come to a conclusion. But if he doesn't, I don't go out looking for them. <laughs> Sorry. I think God has us busy enough with just trying to take care of me and you and the man in the mirror and the man next door and the man that you happen to be sitting next to in church. I think God's pretty busy with us, isn't he? So today, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend to show rage or worthy purpose. Proverbs 27, 17. If you want to do something for God, then don't associate with people who do nothing. <laughs> uh, you may have to drastically change your life if you want to move on with what God has called you to do. Spend time with people who know how to use their days well. Just as iron sharpens iron, positive people will inspire you to be positive. Godly people will inspire you to use your faith to do for the Lord what is in your heart to do. Spend time with people who are doing something for the Lord. Elisha got a double portion of Elijah anointing. You know, it's funny because we go all this in English to make sure that we know which one it is. Elisha and Elijah, where it's Eliah and Eliyahu. And that's a little easier to do in Hebrew than it is to do in English. <laughs> but he had to associate with Eliah, Elijah, for a long time to get it. See 2 Kings 2, 1, 14. In other words, Eliyahu spent time with Eliyah in order to learn what Elisha needed to as a young man to be anointed with double of what Elijah had. And what the devotional basically says is, you know, and as much as people are, you know, worried about humanism from positive thinking or then they get too carried away where they think it's all all positive thinking and it's not humanism, but it's like, oh, the devil have me did negative thoughts. I'm sorry, but God gave me negative thoughts sometimes too. You know, so I don't think it's the devil because he can only be in one place at one time. He doesn't need any help. He's got the flesh of our own flesh to work with. So guess what? <laughs> the world systems can deal with us and cause us to do what we're doing without any help from the, the devil. <laughs> but... The point being is that when you change your environment, you change what grows there. If I put the umbrella down on a morning sun and an afternoon sun, most of these plants that I have on my porch would die. It would be too much for them to bear. They would have no covering, no shelter, no blocking from the sun's rays. When you are under that shelter, these plants flourish. A certain amount of portion of light comes in, a certain amount of water I do, and they grow in their place and in their pots, each accordingly displaying different colors, different styles of plant, different growth. And I arrange them and I put them in place where I'd like them to be so that they inspire me and cause me to look at and recognize how varied and wide and different the body of Christ is. How we are all plantings of the Lord. And just like each one of these plants are different and they all have a unique beauty, so too I look at the body of Christ and I see the same. I say, hey, look at that coleus. That reminds me of a... <laughs> I'm not putting any names on. Somebody's going to get offended. But I could think of a few. <laughs> or you know some of these other plants you know and I like it because God uses that for my benefit but you can change your environment you can be brought down sometimes by a lot of cursing and swearing and cussing and kicking and just tearing down and sharing down and making everything seem like it's all negative I know in one of the ministries that I do on the internet, there's constantly people that just are looking for conspiracies and how to tear the country down and the president down and anybody down that, you know, they start with one authority, but if you read all that they post, they're tearing down all authority. I question whether they submit to God <laughs> at times. Do they? I don't know. But the point being is that I don't want to be around that. Because God appoints authority as he chooses, and it says that he sets up kings and kingdoms 
he sets those men above us for those reasons that we should submit to that we learn discipline from. They may not be righteous and they may not be holy, but God allowed them to be in office for that particular reason because he's designed it so that we could learn from it. And I learn from it. I pray for him. I pray that God knows I hope we don't get another one like that. But if we do, praise the Lord. God intended that to be that way for me, to learn and to adapt and to share with him my concerns and cares. But when you're around people that are constantly tearing down, then they don't stop with just one person. They go after another and another and another. Or if a person is into bitterness, you'll notice that bitterness loves company. They get bitter and then they have to tell someone. And then they're bitter about that. And it just keeps perpetuating itself. Now, I'm not going to say that you should always be positive because, you know, we have the ISU, we, the gym generation that, you know, just said, oh, well, we got to always make positive profession because if you're positive, then it's always positive. And guess what? You know, the only positive can be positive. But you know what happens when you put two positives together? They repel. <laughs> God didn't design for all positive. I'm sorry. It's like a magnet. Guess what? God may want a negative person in your life so you could be attracted and stuck to. <laughs> So you could balance out their character flaws, and their character flaws could balance out your positivity. And you know what? That's what the devotional said. So you may be thinking that, you know, you should only be around just positive people, like this said. But you should be around a balance of that which causes growth and development. And that in your life means involving yourself with those that are pointing towards God, directing you towards God, causing you to want God the same way that you do. And then again, misery loves company. So if you really want to be miserable, like I always say, not only can you, you are. And you're probably involving a lot of people with you because they like to be miserable too. So the choice is yours. The determination of which way you choose to go, of course, is up to you. But I will say this. When you walk out from underneath this umbrella, sun's hot out there and you know what will happen if you're in an environment that you're not designed for if I had just come down from Alaska <laughs> I used to live there and I had just walked into this porch I'd already be passed out because my blood would be so thick I couldn't handle this heat so too you may be thick-headed enough to walk out from the protection of God because he may be saying to you he wants you to be around godly people and maybe not the ungodly for a while.